It is officially 2018 and we are filming episode seven of the Creators Club. Yes, I said seven before episode one even comes up. That is called being proactive. And we are here with Drake on set. We're about to get it. Let's go. Today's guest, Drake Curtis, swapped his dancing shoes for a pair of wings when he discovered his passion for travel. Today, he's introducing us to his new travel vlog with hopes of enhancing the travel experience for jet setters worldwide. Welcome back to the Creators Club where we find out what drives artists and creative professionals just like you. Today I am joined by Drake Curtis who will actually be moving into a new career as a flight attendant in just a few weeks. Drake, how are you? I'm great. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited. Welcome. Welcome to the clubhouse. That's what we're calling this little atmosphere. Love it. Love nice it. little safe haven for us. So just to give you some backstory. So I invited you here today because as I just mentioned, um, you're going to be moving into a career as a flight attendant. People are probably wondering why is he on the Creators Club? So, um, something that we're going to get into later, but you're actually going to be starting a new creative venture in just yes. a few weeks, actually, yes. as well as this new job um, that's called Flight Coach Drizzy. Yes, sir. Right? <laughs> um, so, in my opinion, that inducts you into the creative industry. Ah, yeah. So, <laughs> let's, let's, let's start with that and tell us about what is Flight Coach Drizzy. Okay. So, Flight Coach Drizzy is a vlog that I started on YouTube. And, well, I started it first because I started working as an airline employee, as a gate agent. And for JetBlue in Boston. And I realized the stress level at which customers fly was just too intense for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, in order to make my job easier at this point, like, what can I do to make people more informed? Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted to start Flight Coach Drizzy. To make, it, I guess it was selfish. I wanted yeah. to make my job easier. Okay. From there, I realized how great it could be um, informing customers and just creating levels, dropping levels of stress all over the world. Oh, that's my yeah. hope. Yeah, But, I mean, you never know where it takes me, so we'll awesome. see. I'm excited. All right, so we'll go more in detail about that in just a few minutes, but let's go all the way back now. Let's rewind. Right. What is the Drake Curtis story? Like, what led you to even getting into the, the, the flight and airline industry? Okay. So, um, we started dancing together. Yes. 2005. 2005. Long Five, time yeah. ago, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we were 15 years old. It's crazy. Um, professional dancer in Nia Dance Troupe till about 21 about 21, and after that, I we traveled so much mm -hmm. all over the world. We had so many experiences. You remember Senegal. I, remember I talked Senegal. about that in my video. <laughs> um, South Africa, London, Paris, a whole bunch of places. Um, so cool, but that sparked travel in me. Mm -hmm. And um, once I finished dancing, I knew that I loved dance, but I knew that I didn't want to pursue it as a career. So I realized that airline and traveling was something that was very important to me. Mm -hmm. I love to travel. I love to explore new places. So I started applying to airlines, and JetBlue, they hired me, and it was just like kind of just... A ripple effect from there. Nice. Yeah. So let's go a little deeper. So what was it? Um, I remember, you know, right around the time we were all transitioning into college and stuff like mm -hmm. that, we all kind of decided what our career paths were going to be. Right. What was it um, in you that told you you didn't want to pursue dance as a career? Uh, well, my best friend, um, Keaton, who you're probably going to talk to later on mm -hmm. this week or a few months, um, we took classes together and he was taking like five classes. I had taken one. And I was content with my one class, and mm -hmm. he was taking five. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if I don't have the passion to take five classes as a professional dancer, then that's not the career that I want. Mm -hmm. If I'm not going to dedicate everything that I have into this or want to, mm -hmm. then what's the point of me wasting my time right. here? I know that I love dance, but it's not a career for me. Yeah. And that's a lot. what a lot of people have to yeah. realize. Um, I think that's a great point because there's a lot of people that I know that, you know, they grow up training or experience in one thing mm -hmm. and when they get to their adult years, they kind of feel like they have to stick to it. Exactly. And I, I love that you pointed out that you realize that like me and this person, we do, we're doing the same thing. We're side by side doing the same thing mm -hmm. and their drive is on a whole different level for this one thing. Right. You know what I mean? And that allowed you to identify that you maybe you weren't as passionate about it. And I think that it's a great thing and it's a brave thing when somebody can be honest about that. Yeah. And um, just a, li a little message for everybody out there. It's like just because you grew up doing something for a really, really long time does not mean that you have to do that one thing. Always take time to, you know, self-reflect, evaluate, kind of look at people around you that may have the same hustle and, and recognize, are you working as hard as they're working? Are you, you know, as passionate about yeah. it? And if not, you know, make a career change early, not when it's too late. No. I mean, it's never too late in a sense, but you definitely want to make it while you still have time to make those kind of changes. You know what I mean? Yes. So and you I really also respect that, that. You also have that, I'm sorry to cut you off, but okay. you also have to have to have the courage to try new things. Yeah. Because if you don't, you don't know what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know right away that I just wanted to be an employee for JetBlue or mm -hmm. a flight attendant, but... I was going to apply and I was going to at least try mm -hmm. to see if that was going to be fitting for me in that time period. Right. <laughs> Once you made that realization, what was the next step from there? 
once I made that realization, um, I, d- I didn't know automatically that I wanted to join the airline industry. Industry. I just wanted to try new things. Mm-hmm. That was my next step. Um, and I moved to Atlanta. I made mistakes. Mistakes happen. Mm-hmm. I made, moved to Atlanta. Um, I started working and teaching dance classes in Atlanta, mm-hmm. a jazz class. I was working at a sports bar. So, you know, trial and error. You figure things out, realize what you want to do. Yeah. Ultimately, um, I applied to JetBlue. And then they ended up hiring me. So once I got into there, I'm like, oh, this is cool. This is an opportunity. Let me just go with it. Mm-hmm. And then from there, getting to JetBlue, I worked two and a half years for JetBlue. And I wanted to be a flight attendant. Mm-hmm. After a year and a half, I applied for JetBlue as a flight attendant. And they denied me. And I did JetBlue training videos. Mm-hmm. Like I committed myself to this company so much. And I just realized that, I mean, I love JetBlue, but I just realized that there's other places for me out there to grow and to mm-hmm. become more. So yeah. then I applied to Delta, and I told myself that I wasn't going to be in the same position this year that I was last year. Mm-hmm. And I made that commitment, and I got the position as a flight attendant. And congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> and especially, especially when you make that kind of commitment to yourself where you're like, right. I'm going to make a change next year, and I'm going to have progress in my career. Mm-hmm. And you applied. Like you said, you got denied a couple times it trying, yeah. and that's going to happen. You're going to get some no's, and doors are going to close, but you were persistent. That's a key word, persistence. Yeah. You were persistent, and, and it worked out. You know what I mean? So are you excited about I'm so this excited. new thing? And from the, back <laughs> to the like the denial, like it sucks. Mm-hmm. Like You cry. Like People don't understand because they see the success. They don't see the backstory. But like mm-hmm. I was hurt. Like I worked a year and a half for this company, and I thought that I got this. Yeah. And, and they're like, no. Now I have to wait a whole 365 days to apply again for this right. company for the same position. Yeah. It's like that takes 365 days mm-hmm. of working in a position that yeah. you know that you could have had is just like, yeah. I mean, not working in that position. And this is a situation that can apply to every industry. Like I said earlier, persistence, um, employers, you know, directors, anyone that's in a hiring position, they want to see you try again. They want to see you come back. They want to see familiar faces. And just because you didn't get something the first time does not mean that it's not for you. Mm -hmm. It just means that it wasn't then. You know what I mean? So always try again. The thing that I had, wait, one more thing before we finish. No, go ahead, go ahead. But the thing that I had to tell myself is, I researched it too. I do a lot of research of companies. In Delta, there's a 2% chance of being hired. Oh, wow. 276,000 people apply. Wow. So it's like, there's a chance that my little one person wasn't even seen throughout that process. Right, right. So I can't take it personally. Mm-hmm. I just got to try again and throw myself out there, there and be my go. best self, project my best self. Yeah, and that's actually another good point is that sometimes when you're in a situation like that, especially like the entertainment industry where mm-hmm. it's so oversaturated, Crazy. it's very easy for somebody to miss you in that audition room or in that casting or in his case when he applied to that job, especially jobs that have those electronic systems where you right. submit a resume and you don't even know where it goes. It's so easy for people to miss you. Mm-hmm. And it, and sometimes it has nothing to do with you. So a good point that you made is don't take those things personally. Right. Um, the next thing I want to move into is I want to go back to Flight Coach Drizzy. Mm-hmm. Now, um, something that I really like to encourage people to do is that like if you're someone that loves to be creative but you know what you were pursuing necessarily didn't work out or you weren't mm-hmm. as passionate about it as you thought i think it's important to recognize that you can explore your creativity in other ways right. so um you know that being said that's kind of what led you to flight coach drizzy now again entrepreneurship can be so simple and and it's as simple as just literally solving a problem either for yourself or for other people mm-hmm. a lot of people think entrepreneurship is like I have to come up with this multi-million dollar company that's just going to be a multi-million dollar company tomorrow. And it needs to be this big growing. No, it's mm-hmm. as simple as solving a simple I, a simple problem for people. And the reference that I always use is the selfie stick. Yeah. Right? That was an issue. Like, trying to take your own photo <laughs> was an issue. And, oh, people are cut off. And, and somebody said, let's put millions. the camera on a stick. Right? Millions, of millions and millions of dollars, you know, generated from that simple yeah. idea. So, the birth of Flight Code Drizzy. So, you had mentioned earlier that... Um, you know, working for the airlines, there were a lot of problems that you would run into with customers and you were like, you know what? This is stressful for me. Mm-hmm. It's stressful Everything. for them. I want to, prov- I want to create an outlet or a platform mm-hmm. where people can, um, that people can use to learn how to better service themselves right. and to b- better learn how to make the travel experience better for them, better for employees. So again, so just talk me through one more time, yep. the, 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 the birth of the idea <laughs> of flight coach Drizzy. So, um, I was working a flight one day. And I had a customer. Behind me was a big open window. And it was downpouring to the point where you couldn't see out the window. Wow. And this customer came up and asked me why her flight was delayed. (laughs) And, I mean, you want to be as hospitable as you can. So I didn't want to be condescending or anything like that to her. But Mm -hmm. I'm like, I need to find an outlet to teach people 
to just um, understand the airport and how planes and aircrafts and how everything works. Yeah. And if you're flying from Boston to Florida and there's weather in DCA, there's going to be issues with your flight. You yeah. have to fly in the air to get over this stuff. There's mm -hmm. different flight patterns. And that was where I just knew that I needed to start this because mm -hmm. I just, I feel like I needed to educate people on how to fly. Right. There's no outlets that tell you this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you that fit screens may not change right away. So you got to do the research to find out where your gate's going to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like technology, there's faults in technology. Right. There's your boarding pass. You print out a paper at home and your gate changes. It's still going to say gate 36 right. because it's not Harry Potter. It's right, not going right, to change. Right, right, you know what right, I mean? Yeah. So it's stuff like this that people need to know mm -hmm. um, in order to travel and Personally, if you're going to Bahamas, you want to be you don't want you want to be stress free. Right. You don't want to go there stressing, and then you get to the airport like no, your stress should decrease at the moment that you get to the airport and you're ready to go on vacation. Right, and that's what I wanted for people. Yeah, so we'll get into some more specifics about what you want to you know put out into the world, but just right off the bat, like some things that I do to make traveling easier for me is one, I never try to travel where um, I'm gonna arrive right at the brink of like going into a meeting yeah. or a, a work situation. I always give myself. I always will travel like the day before or make sure that I'm not going right into something. Right. That just makes more sense to it's me. It's preparation. And then two, there's an app out there. There's apps out there, a lot, probably a lot of different ones, but I use mm -hmm. one called Tripcase. Yes. Where you can input your flight information and it will tell you in real time mm -hmm. when those things happen, when there's delays, if your flight's on time, if your gate changes. So it's a, it's funny that I do notice too when I'm in the airport, so when people are always ready to react and they're mm -hmm. always ready to complain. Exactly. But there are simple things out there that you can literally do yourself to kind of make that experience easier for you. Right. So just right off the back, like what are what do you feel like are the top three things that you deal with when it comes to customers um, working at an airline? Uh, before you go, um, before you finish, there was something that you had touched on, um, and ultimately you've created, you've managed yourself as an independent traveler. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you're not gonna have everybody else figure out how you're going to get to your place. You're like, I'm going to get here and I'm going to figure out how I'm going to use these resources to mm -hmm. get me there. Right. And that's the whole point of Flight Coach Frizzy. Mm -hmm. But you did touch on um, three issues that I feel like I hear customers complain about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Biggest thing would be gate changes, um, especially when it's bad weather. There's mm -hmm. a lot of gate changes. Flights come in. It's really, it can get really messy. Right. It's a storm in Boston, one degrees, and they just had a blizzard. I'm sure it's a complete show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's one thing. Another thing I hear customers complain about is weather. When there's a web a weather delay, you're not going to be reimbursed. Mm. It's not going to happen. If it's canceled, then they will rebook you, but you're not going to be reimbursed. Weather is something that we cannot control. Um, we can also check weather the flight, you mm. know what I mean, a week's prior to see. Like, this is the type of research we can do as human beings. Yes. So airlines are not going to reimburse you for weather delays. 